We are here once again with a game uh, between Hello Moto and MTW. This is this game two from Ghost to League? Uh, this is a league system. I just got asked this, so I'm uh, explaining it for a second. It's a league system, which means that there's two games between each team, and for each win that they get, they get a point. The point, the team with the most wins, with the most points at the end of the season wins. That's how it goes. Uh, so that is how. Um, well, this is what we're uh, what we're going for. See who gets the points. Uh, previous game was taken by Hello Moto, so they did take a point there in a quite epic game, I may I add, where MTW had a massive advantage at some point, but Hello Moto not backing off and able to take the team fight. Tied on to being a crucial hero in that uh, in that game, definitely. And it's going to be this time Hello Moto on the Radiant side and MTW on the Dire side. As in the previous game, it was swapped around, so that is the case here. And we will have. A ban already. Hello Moto picking up, uh, banning out the Lone Druid, a hero that MTW does like to play a lot, and it looks like MTW going into their reserve time. We might have. Looks like maybe they weren't entirely done. No, they were. Like him being banned out here. Radiant. That's the first one that gets banned out from MTW. Let's see if they're gonna ban out the Tide Hunter as well at some point. That might be uh, something uh, that they don't want to face again. But we're gonna see first an Enigma yeah, ban out from Hello Moto and a. Darkseer banned out from MTW. So those are the bad outs. So far as we have a last bad out for Hello Moto coming out right now. Uh, they, there's still a lot of heroes that we normally see. Uh, I mean, MTW managed to pick up a Nature's Prophet in the previous game, but was not able to take the game with that. And Nature's Prophet and the Chen. Those two heroes, just massive pushing power, but still not enough to take care of Hello Moto. Hello Moto just coming off too strong with their uh, CK that they had picked up in that game. Well, we're gonna see if uh, if those heroes are gonna be used again, or if both teams think, think okay, you know, the other team now knows what we're gonna do with that strategy. Let's switch our strategies around and go for something entirely different, so that you know we take our enemies by surprise. But if that's gonna be the case, if that's gonna be possible, we will see in the game that is uh, that we do see now. As I just noticed that MTW doesn't have their team profile up, even though there are with four people of their team right here. So that's quite odd. I will check that out later, if I can. Uh, we have a Chen and a Nature's Prophet banner, so those two are not going to be in the pool anymore. Which is, is gonna, what is going to be in the pool is an Evoker. If they want to have that, they do want to have that. So that will be picked up by MTW, uh, sorry, by Hello Moto. As uh, MTW had that in a previous game, I believe. Did they? No, they didn't. No, Hello Moto had that in a previous game as well. Enchantress will be picked up by MTW. They do like their pushing heroes, and Enchantress is one of those heroes that can definitely, uh, definitely do that. Especially early level. She's able to come out of the jungle at level 1 with two creeps at her side if she wants to. If she finds some good creeps to, uh, to steal in the jungle. And uh, she's able to uh, to lay pressure on the lane very early. Let's see if Helimo how Helimoto is going to deal with that. Are they going to pick up another jungle hero? There's not that many left though. And with not many, I mean... Time. The most normal heroes that you see in the jungle are already out. The Lycan, the Chen, Enigma. Maybe even a dark seer, but then again, previous game they didn't have a jungle hero either, and they were able to take that game pretty securely. So uh, what am I complaining about, really? Oh, Broodmother will be picked up by MTW first. They had it in the previous game as well. Yes, they had and a Broodmother and a Chen and an Nature's Prophet, and was still not able to push in at time. I know, right? But uh, Helamoto just making sure that uh, yeah, there we go again. Tied on to being picked up instantly after the Broodmother, just like last time. And we will see uh, how that's gonna go this game. And it looks like this might be this might be a retry from previous game. And TDW think, okay, why did that strategy not work? We know that that strategy can work. Why did it not work? We're just gonna go again and see if it works again because you know, might not, uh, might not. Uh, yeah, never mind. Oh well, we will see. We will see indeed. And of course, we have to do, we have to remember that MTW is playing with a stand-in today, as uh, Kebab is not here, but is uh, well being replaced by Aki from CLG. So that might be crippling MTW a bit. Also, uh, last picking for maiden. for the ban phase is gonna for Helamoto is gonna be a Crystal Maiden. Uh, they used her in the previous game as well, very solid. And so far, Helamoto is taking the exact same heroes in, as in the previous game. MTW instead of the Chen, they now have the Enchantress. Uh, they could have picked up the Tinker here to have a semi, <laughs> the semi the same lineup as the previous game. I mean, it's not an Age of Profit, but it's still global presence. If they want to go for that, yeah, it's gonna be Lushrek instead. And Lushrek wasn't in, uh, in the other team in the previous game, so that's a change that we see here. 
that's definitely a change that we see here. As we're going into the ban phase, let's see what Helomoto is going to be banning out. What they don't they want to face? Probably it's still going to be a Tinker. They banned out a Tinker in the previous game as well. And MCW does like Tinker quite a bit because he is one of those heroes that can just uh, push in. This is like the Lone Druid just going... I mean, the thing that they didn't have in the previous game is something that a Tinker can do. As in, stand at the bottom of a base and just... Uh, Push in. There goes the tinker and he's bent out. I uh, push in with the uh, with the merchant machines, being able to make sure that you got the advantage. And and then of course your opponent team can't really walk in there and take it, try to take a team fight because merchant machines is, is a lot of damage. And there goes uh, yeah, there, there goes the tinker. So not no surprise there. Let's see what MTW is going to be banning out for this one. Are they going to be banning out something that they were facing in the previous game? As somehow for some unexplainable reason, a chaos knight. That's one. Uh, are they going to be banning out the chaos knight? For example, they uh, had some trouble facing that one last game, so we will see if uh, if they're comfortable with having the risk of it being picked up again. Taking their time. There goes the Chaos Knight. Wow! I think mean, twice too good in a row. Nice. Hello, Moto. What are they gonna ban out? Maybe something like a uh, like uh, the hero that I, I said earlier. The the strength that Tinker has and Lone Druid has is the same thing for the Death Prophet. Death Prophet can do the same thing. You just stand on the base, hit the tower once, and her spirits just fly out. Exorcism, exorcism, uh, doing its job. So that might be a ban out here. As a MTW, what are what do they need? They might they might ban out a Sand King as well. Sand King La Shrek combination is of course very strong. Uh, because uh, right now they have got a soul lane, they have got a jungle hero, and they need something for La Shrek to, to combine. Need, or unless they're gonna go for a soul lane La Shrek, that could be possible too. Uh, but they need a soul lane and a dual lane. That's kind of the story. And um, well, solo lane already Tinker is being banned out as a solo lane. It's going to be Brewmaster that's getting banned out as the second Dyer hero. as uh, They don't want to have a combination with that one. As For example, a, Sh a Shadow Demon together with a uh, Brewmaster would be a good, good combination for MTW if they want to solo the Shrek. But we're not going to see... Uh, we're not going to see that. Because we're going to see... Uh, we're not going to see Broodmaster, Brewmaster. Uh, Windrunner being banned out by MTW. Don't want to face that one as uh, the pick is now in the court of... Hello, Moto. What are they gonna go for? Are they gonna go for? Actually, they're looking for trialing, probably with a crystal maiden, maybe with a sand king or an earth shaker. And uh, if they go for an earth shaker, earth shaker crystal maiden is probably one of the most safe trialings ever, at least for the hero that's gonna be farming. And morphling that was banned out in the previous game by MTW as the first ban is still in the pool. And Hello, Moto does like to play the morphling, so let's see if they're gonna pick that up, that one up. Actually, five seconds remaining. They might. They might, and I'm just uh, I'm just gonna Sorry. it's gonna be the Sand King instead. I'm just gonna say uh, fill something in here because it doesn't look like MTW has their logo up. So now it says MTW on the side, so you're able to see who is who, and uh, you know that will maybe solve a bit of confusion. I don't know. It says so in the title as well, so I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna have the, first, the last, well, actually the first pick after the ban for MTW. We already had the first base after the last bound phase for Elamoto, so now it's for MTW. As, uh, like I said, they still have a lot of options. Uh, they could go either for a dual lane or for a solo lane hero, uh, because Lushrak could do either, so it's kind of impossible to say right now. Are they going to play Lushrak as a support, or are they going to play him as a, as a solo? They could still pick up the Shadow Demon as well, still in the pool. And Sand King actually picked up here. So uh, I, I did say him as a possible ban candidate for Hello Moto, but if they actually want to pick them on, one up as first, so that's a logical one that doesn't get banned. Let's see, though. They're taking their time. 35 seconds left into their bonus time, using every second of it. 30 seconds. 25. It's going to go down. Because I can't really say anything more, because MTW, I mean... Venomancer. They pick up the Venomancer. I, I, like I said, I, I can't really predict their picks that much. I can say what kind of role they're looking for, kind of, but MTW kind of, since the heroes that they normally pick, like a Tinker, like a Lone Druid, some of their standard favorite heroes uh, are no longer in, so it's kind of a... Uh, if, if I could start guessing, I would just uh, look like an idiot, and I don't want to do that, because I do that enough already anyway. Um, Hello Moto, last pick for them. What are they gonna go for? Are they gonna go for a hard care? Are they gonna go for that Morphlin that I was expecting earlier? 
Or are they going to go for something entirely different? Maybe we're Morana if they're worried that their Morphling is not going to get enough farm in time because MTW are looking to go for pushing again. I mean, with the Shrek, with the Broodmoth and Enchantress, they kind of have the same thing as previous game, even though not with a TP in. Wow, I was not guessing that one. But Storm Spirit is going to be the pickup here. But yeah, a lot of push in from MTW once again. They can push in. Sorry, they can gank. And then push in with the Enchantress as well. And then they take uh, take early tower. And uh, yeah, a lot of pushing power as well. So Storm Spirit is ready for action a lot sooner than a Morphling would be. So good pick up there. As uh, they're kind of assuming that MTW is not going to go for a really hard carry. And uh, hopefully for, for Helamoda. I mean, last game it did go pretty late. And... CK was able to carry that for them, but right now, if it goes really late, which hero is Storm Spirit actually going to be able to carry them all that way through? Because at some point, Storm Spirit has to snowball uh, in order to stay big. He has to get ahead, he has to stay ahead. And that might be a tricky thing to do, especially if MTW is going to have a very farmed Doombringer? <laughs> Hello? Doombringer is a good counter for the Storm Spirit. I mean, seriously, if you're going to play a Storm Spirit and you're going to get a Doom on you, then BAM! You can't go anywhere anymore. You can't ball away, you can't... You're just useless. So a very good pick up here from MTW as they're looking, they're looking very strong right now. They're definitely looking very strong. The only thing they kind of miss is stuns. They only have, they have a Shrek stun. And uh, maybe an enchant or some, but that's the only stun that they kind of have. And there's, of course, Helamoto has a Frostbite, they have a Vortex, they have a Burrow Strike, they have a Ravage, and they have a Cold Snap. So a lot of Disable on that team. As I'm just going to switch over this so that you see the whole map and uh, nothing but the map. There we go. There we go. And uh, we're going to wait until everyone has picked up their hero. And then we're going to go into this game and see who's playing what and how they are going to do this. Because, yeah, I mean, really... Doombringer. Yes, we're gonna have a Doom. It's gonna be Shokska playing that Doom for MTW. Fonzie is gonna be playing that Broodmother once again. We'll have Aki on the Enchantress this time. The previous game he was on that Chen. We're gonna have Phonic on the Venomance and Sinrin is gonna be, play be playing the Lashrak. So Lashrak will indeed be middle as the dual lane from Venomancer and Doom probably. Doom middle? Really? No? Alright, and maybe he's just here to deny a creep. That's gonna be my expectation. Devour. Or does it have to be enemy? No. Enemy or neutral? No. He's gonna go middle. Wow. That's surprising. That is surprising. Oh well. Try lane top anyway. Not with the hero I was expecting, but who cares there. Uh, Funzie's already sitting in his wrap on the bottom lane. He's gonna be up first as a tide hunter most likely. As uh, Actually, uh, so far we're probably gonna see uh, some lane switches. Where is the tide hunter? There he is. Oh, look at his. Look at him. Uh, for Hello Moto, up on the Radiant side, we have PSTM playing the Tide Hunter. We have Fails on the Storm Spirit as he played the CK in the previous game very profoundly. We have Sava Doom on the Crystal Maiden once again. And in the mid lane, we'll have Quicks on the Evoker also once again. And for Hello Moto, last one but not least, it's going to be Heisu up on the Sand King who is aiming to be versus the Broodmother, but we'll probably find out soon enough that he is not versus the Broodmother and they might switch lanes because of that. Oh, even though I, I can't decide which one is, is going to be worse. It's, if it's going to be worse for the Broodmother to stand on the tri lane or if it's going to be worse on the Sand King, because both can be invisible with the Sandstorm and the you know wet. I do think that Funzie is going to be in the, in the advantage for compared to the... Um, to the Sand King though, but we're gonna see. We are gonna see indeed, as uh, at least this time we don't have a fast first blood that I uh, that I'm missing. Maybe still, I uh, maybe I, I shouldn't say something. Knock on wood. Sorry. <laughs> just in case, just in case. And there is no well. There's wards on the Tide Hunter, so he, maybe they were expecting. There goes the first word going down. And Fancy knows he saw the ground move, and there he goes, places another web, making sure that he can still be safe there. And uh, we have got a... We actually got a nice drawing on a minimap. Maybe someone is going to be switching the lanes. But we will see. Or maybe uh, these two are going to be switching. Yes, they are. Leshrak uh, will be by himself versus uh, the Sand King. I mean, he should be able to be fine. They won't be able to kill the Sand King that fast anyway. And uh, Aki and Fonik are just smoking up and going to go towards the bottom lane. Frostbite in the meantime on Funzi is just harassment though. Just harassment, as a uh, crystal main can't kill off a broodmother. 
yet, depending on how many far how much farm she gets, of course. In the meantime, top uh, middle lane is actually Doombringer. Should be having a fairly uh, difficult time trying to get extra last hits apart from his Devourer, especially since Quicks will be able to harass him quite a lot. Especially with the Cold Snap on. on. Smoke's still up. Wanna go for something. Wanna go for someone, rather. Sentry ward up, though, as well. They're gonna walk past there if, they gonna, if there's gonna be creeps. Oh, Crystal Maiden! Is this gonna be first blood? Hello, Gale! Hello, Crystal Maiden! Still lands a frostbite, but is it gonna be enough? I don't think so! Source Spirit! I denied! Source Spirit just denied the Crystal Maiden! Nice play here from Fields! I was thinking, hey, that, that's on the wrong team. Why are you hitting Crystal Maiden? But nice deny, making sure the first blood does not go towards MTW. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? Nice play for our tag! Gosh, as well. A lot of damage here. Is there gonna be anything more? Press up another web and we should be safe. Meantime, in lane 8 for 0 up on the Doombringer as the Invoker is 9 for 1. So, um, so actually, Doombringer not doing bad at all. Definitely not doing bad at all. And Venomance and Enchantress just gonna continue farming creeps here in the jungle. They're probably gonna stick around here because a uh, tri lane versus tri lane is, uh, of course, uh, much more favorable than a tri lane where nothing can happen on the top lane because Sand King is playing it very safe and Lashrak is actually able to just continue his farm uh, with or without Lashrak, so, uh, sorry, with or without Sand King, so should be fine there as well. In the meantime, Goldgraf is in favor of the Dire, and that's gonna be the farm that Lashrak is doing mostly. Lashrak is being 17 for 6 right now, as I don't think he missed a lot of last hits. Broodmother is not able to get that much farm, and, um, well, Doombringer being able to get a lot as well, of course. Gold Snap. Another Gold Snap, and he pops his uh, fast walk thingy, Scorched Earth. Wow, sorry, I don't cast a Doom very often, as you might tell. <laughs> uh, pops his Scorched Earth, and, uh, and uh, yeah, it's fine. And he's more creeps, of course. More creeps, better. And this is looking like a very uh, nuclear nuclear situation. Crystal Maiden by yourself once again. Broodmother still on one hit, one kill. The Shrek. The Shrek, Edict going off. Will this be your first blood? I think it will be. First blood, Sindarin going to Sindarin and Sandkin going down. Yeah, you know what I wanted to say. First blood there. And that was a very easy kill from just running, uh, chasing him down with the uh, Edict top. It's just a uh, level 3 Edict is just doing so much damage. And Sand King being able to level 3 first to level 5 the Shrek is not a very funny thing to, uh, to face against. Of course, he will be able to uh, to do that more often. Sand King will only be safe if he is uh, actually out of line of sight if the Shrek doesn't know that he's there. Because he can't go into a, sunstor into a sandstorm because he will get uh, Split Earth out of that one. And if he's too far out, he just like we saw just now, he's just going to get chased down. Extra movement speed on the Shrek, making sure that he is going to be able to uh, stay ahead and get that Edict up. And with no creeps to take the damage as well, that will be a kill for the Shrek every single time. Hello, Gink. Is there going to be a Gale? There's going to be a Gale. There wants to be a Gale. Shockwave going through. No Gale though. No Gale, no go. No Gale, no kill. The Invoker in the meantime, 18 for 1, close up on Shaska. Oh, that's a level death up on Invoker, wants to go for him actually, but goes invisible. And this is going to be Doombringer try taking some damage from the tower and his double damage from was not able, to, not enough to, uh, to kill off the Invoker before he went invisible. Would have had one more hit or so, and, and maybe a Doom. He's level 6 now, so the Doom would be able to do that. Invoker being level 5 in the meantime. Still might be turning into a kill if he sees him enough. One doom might might just be enough for the kill. In the meantime, gosh, Gale, Crystal Maiden. This time will he be able to deny him again because he is gonna go down for sure, but no deny this time. The tent was there, but Swordsmith getting stunned here by the sand tower. Taking a lot of damage for himself as well, though he's level 5, got ball lightning away yet, and Chandra's getting a kill. Two kills here on this bottom lane, bottom lane again, as Tide Hunter, is he gonna be able to do anything? I don't think so, that is three kills up on this bottom lane, Crystal Maiden being back, still wants to go for a Broodmother, gets the Broodmother, so at least they got something in return here, as, uh, well, it's three for one now on the bottom lane, but getting Broodmother, at least it is something they could do, Crystal Maiden taking the kill, oh well, she needs gold too, she needs those boots of hers, because otherwise she's gonna be way too slow. Use all her mana there to uh, to do that, and no doom upon the invoker, so no kill for Shockscar just yet. And we're gonna see how this is gonna continue going on. 
Like I said, Broodmother is back here. He's ha already had his soul ring, so he's gonna be able to continue Storm Spirit to, to harass Storm Spirit. But uh, Storm Spirit, as soon as he's level six, we're probably gonna see uh, a bit more aggression from him, as he might actually leave the lane to try to get some extra kills, perhaps. Perhaps. Hello. Gale hits Doom as well. He can't go invisible now. He got no place to go. Nowhere to hide, he will drop here for sure as Enchantress takes the last hit for that Aki, making sure that he gets 3 for 0. Good job for him. My sprites are with and will heal himself up again as well. Got a ring of Bacillus. Not gonna try to push just yet though. This is a fake invoker. I was wondering why is someone standing there, but it was actually a fake invoker. Level 4 up on the Sand King right now. He really can't get close to the Shrek. And the Shrek, just uh, happily farming, has his bracers, has his drums, should have uh, enough. He's just waiting for the donkey to get back from the middle lane. Tied on to level 3 still. Level 4 Crystal Maiden. That will be painful for them. They need that Ravage up. They need to get that level advantage. And so far, if we take a look at this, it's, o it's over 3k in favor of MTW. And that's also because of the kills, of course, because we have a. Uh, well, we see yes, one for six, but it's actually one for five because, of course, Crystal Main got denied. Uh, but it's um, it's it's a massive difference, and you need those levels up on the tide, up on the Sand King as well, just to be able to take your momentum. You got two heroes that need to get kills with their ultimates, that need to have the team fight going for them. Uh, but if you don't have them at level six, that's not going to be able to do anything. <laughs> Quicks, <laughs> level death, a lot of damage. Level death uh, from level four, and he is level six. So in two levels, if he if he keeps the same, one k gold up on the Doombringer. As he's going for a Vanguard, he's going very tanky. I mean, a Doombringer is actually a very squishy hero, unlike some people might believe. Frost fights on strike shocks, guys. Gonna drop here for sure. There we go. Invoke taking the last hit. And I was saying that it, that Doom is just actually a very squishy hero because he has zero base armor for a very long time. Failed for attacks, Bonzi. He's gonna try to run away into his uh, into his uh, web. Is it gonna be enough? The one more right leg is not gonna do the job. There's no mana left on the Storm Spirit, and he is gonna be able to stay alive. In the meantime, tower getting pressured on the top lane. Sand King at least not getting caught out, not getting ganked, but still, his tower went down. Enchantress there, Venomanta died with his wards level three already, and uh, his wards level three because he's level five, of course. And the tier four tower, tier two tower getting pressured here as well. Meet up tier 1 tower in the middle lane will drop as well, but uh, tier 2 tower going down for tier 1 is not very nice trade. Lashrak taking the last hit for that one. As he's having some great farm, picked up an Ogre Club, is gonna go for that BKB. Because the one thing that you can do, if you first a team that has and a Sand King and a Tide Hunter, so that's a lot of team fight, Epicenter, Ravage. What can you do to stop that from uh, to stop that from having any effect from you? That's just a BKB. So as soon as they got BKB up on a lot of heroes, which they probably will be doing, uh, that team fight for Hello Moto will be a lot less, a lot less powerful than uh, than it is intended to for them. And there goes Fails back on the Zitter's bottom lane. And he's still gonna face the Broodmother. It's gonna continue doing that as well. Doom wants to go for the tier one tower here. TP in. Cold snap. There's gonna be Lashrak, and there's a Doom Fix. Can't do anything anymore. He's just trying to run away from this, but is he gonna be running fast enough? No, I don't think so. Lashrak's done. Take him a last hit, and that is gonna be Quicks going down, and it's probably gonna go a tier one tower going down as well. Tide Hunter still not level six, so still not a Ravage there to take it. A level six up on the Sand King, though, so at least they have that much. Uh, but uh, they can't really go in here. It's, it's too much heroes that they, they are not in the advance and they want to be in the advantage. Crystal Main landing a frost by Stan, landing on top of Doom though. Edict there as well as the Shrek taking the last hit and that's gonna be the tower. That was Crystal Main just in a very odd position there. And um, well that costed her a life. This field's gonna try to take the regen rune. Is it gonna be enough? Is it gonna be fast enough? Yes. Still got the stun though, it's still gonna go down. The Shrek dominating. And he actually gets a double kill from the Crystal Main kill earlier as well. As the gold graph, I mean, I mean, we saw the gold graph earlier as well, going towards uh, 15k in favor of MTW before Elamoto taking it back. So I'm afraid to say anything now, but it's still in favor of MTW. And uh, right now, I mean, they don't have that hard carry that they had previous game. They have got a uh, storm spirit who just died and who needs to be snowballing. So I'm not sure though. Let's see. MTW at least having the same strategy once again uh, as the previous game. As uh, they're gonna take down this tier 1 tower on the bottom lane. It's gonna be the last tier 1 tower on the side of Hellamoto. As MTW is just uh, making quick use of all the towers 
making sure they go down very fast and getting their gold advantage up as we do see it dropping uh, below 7,500 gold right now and, and, and it's say dropping below but it's actually spiking above it's just because of the graph going downwards it's just very confusing and all oh crystal maiden hello hello frostbite gosh is there gonna be a doom? No, no mana for a doom. Well, he has got his magic one, but he doesn't want to go for it anymore. Titles are there as well. It's just too risky. Even for almost three kill up on the crystal main. And it looks like uh, MTW wants to push into the tier two tower as well. They can't do so though. I mean, there's only defending a tide hunter, and uh, wow, two heroes dying at the same time with only Lashrak here. Crap! I missed that. And we have some smiley face as well. Store spirit and sand king going down. Edicts are doing the damage, Nova doing the damage, and it's just, that's just Lushrek out farming and out leveling the rest. Radiant In the meantime, bottom lane still going down here, Tidehunter still level 5, is not able to do anything against this tower, a tower will probably drop here. As a uh, cold snap, Sinrin, gonna try to run away from this one, he's almost out of mana, so can't really be here anymore. But Crooks doesn't want to chase him. Radiant's tower going down bottom lane. Has fallen. Sun doesn't hit once again. Quick, so wanting to go uh, for some harassment once again. In the meantime, Gold still drops. I mean, that kill. What the hell. Experience Graph also very much in favor of MTW. No surprise there. I mean, really, 3 for 11. That's what you can expect. And MTW is going to go for a Roshan. They can do that with the creeps tanking up the Roshan. Uh, Vanguard being completed on the Doombringer, by the way. As we have Enchantress actually going towards the Negative Scepter. Making sure that she can stay. I mean, so far. When there has been a fight, she has been able to stay back in fights and just uh, use her uh, impetus if she wants to. Um, and if you just get that Aghanim as well, it's just to make a massive difference uh, in damage output. And that's the thing they are excelling in right now. Damage output. Yes, 2400 gold up on the Broodmother. As uh, Aegis will be picked up by the Doombringer. And Broodmother, what is she going to go for? Is she going to go for an Orchid once again like the previous game? Just to make sure that that Storm Spirit can't pull lightning away if she uh, encounters him solo on the lane. It could be. Could also be a BKB for the reasons I said earlier. Storm Spirit, there's gonna be a Doom ready for you. And Bull Lightning was faster though. Yeah, there we go. Doom was not in time. TP in from Invoker. Not wanting to have this pushing happening, but. Uh, they're going back there. The main pro the main purpose there was killing off the storm spirit before a ball lightning away, but the doom was not in time for them uh, to do that. Hello, Fanti. What are you gonna do? Oh, hello. Now, now they can do it again. There goes the doom, and that's gonna be the end of the broodmother, or at least the end of the storm spirit broodmother taking the last hit. Definitely, blast didn't do a thing anymore, and that's gonna be a quick wipe for the storm spirit. In the meantime, Gale bar strike. Venomancer, Epitide is being used for a kill, the Venomancer will be going down here as a TPF from Crystal Main because she took an ultimate, she took a kill and she didn't want to die there anymore as uh, Sand King actually uh, got a TP out as well. Should be okay though. Should be okay. Meteor, just killing off some creeps. Venomancer actually going down two for one and then Epitide to use as well. It's a dangerous Venomancer. Definitely a dangerous Venomancer indeed. 3k gold upon the Broodmother. Might want to go for BKB in one go if she can do it. We'll see. BKB up on the Shrek completed now. Drums completed up on the Doombringer. Were there, weren't there also drums? Yeah, the Shrek also has drums. Two drums up on the Red Dire side. Not sure if intended, but uh, they haven't been together all that much, so there's not a bad thing to have. Especially if you're going to be on solo and you want to be able to get away from somewhere very quick. Fortification being used for this tier 2 tower. Last tier 2 tower on the side of Elamoto. Gold graph dropping towards the 14k. Wants to go for Ravage. There goes the Ravage. Vortex up on the Venomancer as well. The Shrek takes care of the tight ends, but Venomancer going down. The Shrek getting a double kill. Sandkick going down as well. Deafening Blast going through. They want to go for Shokska. Fields actually going down. Godlike. The Shrek here. Triple kill for him. Crystal Main went down. That mess as well as Invoker wants to still get something, but gets a level death up on him and goes. Doesn't go down, but he is forced back all the way. And this time, I mean, if we compare this to last game, this was the t this was the time where <laughs> where uh, sorry, distracted again. Where Hello Moto was able to turn it around, where they were able to take some kills in return, and they were able to take the kill on the Venomancer, but that was all they got. That was all they got, and that's um, yeah, that's different in uh, in this uh, in this time. 
Ravage was able to help out there, but there was not enough follow-up damage to uh, to take care of Sinrin. Sinrin is being so much, so far right now, and his BKB just made sure that he could just run around there with his Nova, with his Eating Top, just doing so much damage. And, uh, well, definitely Blast isn't hit. Cold Snap does hit, though, as does the, as does the Nova. He'll be afloat. Yes. And there goes the Vortex as well, and that's gonna be the end of Aki. Store Spirit taking the kill. Kill still going down, though. They want to go for this. MTW wants to go for this. Actually, Sinrin wants to go for this, or does he? See, will slow Sand King Sinrin running. Wants to go? No. Yes. No. Oh well. For now, they have to wait anyway. Doom is back up again on the Doom if he wants to use it, which he does. Hello, Storm Spirit. Level death as well. Eat it going down as well. Storm Spirit on the run. Will go down here. Doom bring in the meantime, killing off the Tide Hunter as well as. Invoker goes down, drops his Jandler Shrek beyond godlike now as he takes the kill on that one and that is gonna be Hello Moto in the top position. They have not managed to take the team fight as they were in the previous game. Venomans still to going off in his bottom lane still uh, where the Sand King goes down to the level that the Crystal Main goes down here as well. MTW just being very dominant here. <laughs> Spider-Man still goes down to the tower, but this is like MTW saying, okay, our tactic works, and uh, last game was just uh, just an, uh, an accident. There's a GG actually called, because Hellomoto knows that, okay, this time we aren't going to be able to uh, bring the balance back to zero like the previous game, and this is going to be a 17 minutes GG being called out from Hellomoto, so MTW taking the win here in this Ghost to League match, where we saw two games between these teams, both teams were able to take one win, so both will go home with one point in this uh, in this Ghost League. If you want to see more about the standings on uh, current standings on Ghost League, go check out ghostogamers.net and uh, go click on the Ghost League link, and uh, you'll see all the standings, all the information. Also on other divisions, not just this Division One, because uh, this is Division One, but there's also a Division Two if you're interested in that one. And uh, my name is Shiva. I'm a Ghost of Gamers cast. A good, well, go check out shivergaming.com for information about me, where you can follow me on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that and um, well yeah thank you for joining me for these games I, uh, I had fun the first game was of course between these two teams it was of course uh, kinda epic uh, but no rematch from that one as uh, MTW this time we're not able to uh, we're, we're just not losing that, uh, that advantage that they had like they did in the previous game as uh, well I'm just gonna let you show you the end screen for a little while longer so you can see any uh, anything that I might have missed uh, which is not uh, something that uh, well it happens quite a lot so, and there we go. Um, anyway, thank you for uh, for joining me. I am going to see if there's going to be anything up. I don't think so, though, because it's quite late. Um, but I will let you know anyway. Uh, stay tuned for a second more if I, uh, well, I check out what else is going on. And I am going to switch over there so you don't see the password that was used and stuff like that. So be right back. <laughs>